Hello and welcome to this presentation on using a technique in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical to take a null load step so that we can apply a displacement after an initial deformation of a structure and continue the solution after we put in the additional displacement. Let me show you this model to explain what I'm talking about. We've started out with a simple plate. It's meshed with shell elements. It's based on this surface body. We have a remote displacement on the far right edge, and we've prevented movement in X, Z, and rotations. But in the first load step, we go from zero millimeters vertically in the Y direction up to 10. Then we hold it there through the remainder of the analysis. So we start out by moving the far edge up, the far right edge up. At the front left edge, we also have a remote displacement, and we're holding it without movement. We're preventing movements in X, Y, Z, and preventing rotations. However, we have gone in and used activate, deactivate. We've deactivated load steps 1 and 2, starting with 0, so these have been deactivated. There will be no constraint applied. Then, in the third load step, we make it active and we're preventing movements. But what we're going to do in the third load step is change the movement with an APDL commands object. Let's look at analysis settings. We've indicated that we want three load steps. I'm going to go up. There's the remote displacement on that front left edge. There's an APDL commands object inserted. We want to remember the number on the pilot node that controls what happens on the left edge. So I've said my underscore pilot is equal to, and if you go up, let me enlarge this, it'll tell you the remote point node number is underscore n pilot. I want to remember this throughout my analysis, so I put this command in. When the remote point's created, this variable will be created in APDL and remember the node number. Back down to analysis settings, three load steps. Let's click the worksheet view. First load step is ramped up through 10 substeps. Second load step, it's a null step, so I only need one substep. And in the final load step, I ramp it up through 10 more. This is going to let us examine the details of how the structure displaces. Remote displacement far right. We're moving it up 10 units in Y in the first load step and holding everything else. This one, in the front left edge, we're using the remote point. There's its name right here. Using that remote point, and remember we've deactivated the first one and two load steps, and in the third one we hold everything steady. My first APDL commands object Look in the details. It's set to execute on load step number two, what I've been calling my null step, and I'm using a special form of the displacement constraint. The D command, you can look it up in the APDL commands listing, on my pilot, that's the node, all degrees of freedom, and I'm using a special input for the D command, which is percent underscore fix percent. Let's enlarge that. This is a special command, and what it's going to do is ask the solution to continue from the current displacement situation. So that one command is executed. We do a single solve. There's no change in any of the loads on the model. So even in a nonlinear run, this should solve fairly quickly. Now we move on to the third load step. Here's an APDL command. It's set to execute in the third load step. I've commented out the first possible command. What I'm doing is putting in that displacement constraint. Let me zoom. D, acting on my pilot. I'm saying in the Y direction, take the current displacement. That'll be from the end of the second load step. So that's the Y displacement for the node. And add another 10, and in this case we're working in millimeters, another 10 millimeters of vertical displacement. Let's go predict what's going to happen then. The far edge was moved up 10 millimeters. 
no other loads on the model, so the left side is also going to move up 10 millimeters. I do that suppression of the loads on the left, except at the end I have these commands in to prevent rotations and displacements. This is for my null load step and the final load step. Let's zoom again. I'm adding an extra 10 millimeters on to the upward movement of the left front edge. Here's my deformation as a function of time. Everything moves up smoothly because we're moving the far right edge. There's the single null load step substep holding everything constant, but with that fix command executed. And then we're moving the left edge an additional 10 millimeters vertically. So we end up with a maximum movement, and it's at the left of 20 millimeters total. The original 10, because the right was moved up, and then from the displacement where we started, we go an additional 10. The stresses rise this way, and you can see there was no stress until we moved this left front edge up another 10 millimeters. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to show you what happens if I do not include this displacement command fixing all degrees of freedom so that we can add on an additional displacement. Let's suppress this and solve again and wait a moment and look at the deformation and without the null step when I turn on that 10 millimeters at the end it wants to start from no displacement. It doesn't quite go to no displacement because the solution would be here but it ramps up as if we were starting to move this left edge up from zero and not from the point right here. So to get the solution we saw before that smoothly goes up this way, we need to activate this command. Unsuppress, solve one more time, and let's watch an animation of that displacement. Over four seconds, We've used the points that are on this curve and watch it move. First the entire platform and then the front left edge goes an additional 10 millimeters. Perhaps sometime in the future this technique will be useful to you. Thanks for joining me.